In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 20, Part 2 September 23rd, 1926 How the one who must do universal goods must make up for all. The Three Planes of the Will of God I was fusing all of myself in the Holy Divine Volition with the piercing in my soul of not having seen my sweet Jesus. While trying to do my acts in his will, since I did not feel him together with me, oh, how I felt a piece of myself being torn away. So I felt my little and poor existence being torn to shreds without Jesus, and I prayed that he would have pity on me and come back quickly to my poor soul. And then, after much struggling, he came back, but so very afflicted because of the human perfidy. It seemed that nations upon nations were brawling among themselves, to the point of preparing deposits of weapons in order to fight against one another, preparing unexpected things to make battles arise. What madness! What human blindness! It seems that they no longer have sight to see good, order, harmony, but they have sight only to see evil. And this blindness makes them go off their heads, and so they do crazy things. So when seeing him so afflicted because of this, I said to him, My love, leave this sadness. You shall give them light, and they shall not do it. And if my pains are needed, I am ready, as long as they all remain in peace. And Jesus, with dignity and severity, told me, My daughter, I keep you for myself, to form in you my kingdom of the supreme fiat, not for them. I have made you suffer even too much to spare the world. But because of their perfidy, they do not deserve that I keep making you suffer for their sake. And while he was saying this, it seemed that he was holding an iron stick in his hands, in the act of casting it over the creatures. I was frightened, and I wanted to relieve Jesus from his affliction. So I said to him, Jesus, my life, 
For now let us occupy ourselves with the kingdom of your will, so that you may be relieved. I know that giving you feel to let you speak about it is your joy, your feast. Therefore, your acts flow with me, within mine, so that with the light of your will, more than sun, they may invest all creatures, and I may constitute myself, act for each act, thought for each thought. I shall enclose everything. I shall take all of their acts as though in my power, in order to do everything that they do not do for you. And in this way, you shall find everything in me, and your affliction shall depart from your heart. And Jesus, condescending to my yearnings, went around together with me, and then told me, My daughter, what power my will contains! It penetrates everywhere as light. It expands. It gives itself to each act. It multiplies itself to infinity. But while it does so many things and multiplies in each thing, it remains always one, as it is, keeping all of its acts without dispersing even one of them. See, my daughter, the first plane done in my will, in the name of and for all creatures, was done by the Sovereign Queen, and she obtained for all creatures the highest good of making the longed-for Redeemer descend upon earth. The one who acts for all, in the name of all, and makes up for all, earns universal goods that can serve all. The second plane done in my supreme will was done by my humanity. I embraced everyone and everything as if all were one. I satisfied for all. I left not even one act of creature without constituting my act in it, so that the glory, the love, the adoration to my celestial Father might be complete for each act of creature. And this impetrated the fruit of my coming upon earth. It earned salvation and sanctity for all. And if many do not take it, it is their fault, not the fault of the giver. Therefore my life impetrated universal goods for all. I opened the gates of heaven for all. The third plane in my will shall be done by you, and this is why, in everything you do, I make you act for all. Embrace all. Make up in the name of each of their acts. Your plane must be equal to mine. It must be unified to that of the celestial empress. And this shall serve to impetrate the kingdom of the supreme fiat. Nothing must escape the one who must do a universal good, so as to bind to all creatures, the good she wants to give. In order to make up for all, the acts done in my will form double chains, but chains of light that are the strongest, the longest, not subject to breaking. No one can have the ability to break a chain of light, it is more than solar ray that no one can shatter, and even less bar its way to whatever place the length and width of the ray wants to reach. And these chains of light bind God to give universal goods, and the creature to receive them. 
September 26, 1926. The mere word, will of God, contains an eternal prodigy. How everything converts into love and prayer. I was feeling all immersed in the supreme volition, and my poor mind was thinking about the many admirable effects it produces. And my always lovable Jesus told me, My daughter, the mere word, will of God, contains an eternal portent that no one can equal. It is a word that embraces everything, heaven and earth. This fiat contains the creative font, and there is nothing good that cannot come from it. So the one who possesses my will, by virtue of it, acquires by right all the goods that this fiat possesses. Therefore, she acquires the right to the likeness of her creator. She acquires the right to divine sanctity, to his goodness, to his love. By right, heaven and earth are hers, because all came into existence from this fiat. With reason, her rights extend over everything. So, the greatest gift the greatest grace I can give to the creature is to give her my will, because all possible and imaginable goods are bound to it, and by right, because everything belongs to it. Then afterwards my sweet Jesus made himself seen coming out from within my interior, and he was looking at me, but he fixed his gazes on me so much as if he wanted to portray himself, engrave himself within my poor soul. On seeing this, I said to him, My love, Jesus, have pity on me. Don't you see how ugly I am? Your privation during these days has rendered me even uglier. I feel I am good at nothing. Even the rounds in your will I make with difficulty. Oh, how bad I feel. Your privation is like a consuming fire for me, that burning everything in me takes away from me the life of doing good. It leaves me only your adorable will, that binding me all to itself, makes me want nothing but your fiat, and see and touch nothing but your most holy will. And Jesus, resuming his speaking, added, My daughter, wherever my will is present, everything is sanctity, everything is love, everything is prayer. So since its font is in you, your thoughts, your gazes, your words, your heartbeat, and also your movements. Everything is love and prayers. It is not the form of the words that form prayer. No. It is my operating will that dominating all of your being makes of your thoughts, words, gazes, heartbeats, and movements as many little fountains that spring from the supreme will and rising up to heaven in their mute language some pray some love some adore some bless in some my will makes the soul do what is holy what belongs to the divine being. Therefore, the soul who possesses the supreme will as life is the true heaven, that be it even mute, 
narrates the glory of God and announces itself as the work of his creative hands. How beautiful it is to see the soul in whom my will reigns. As she thinks, looks, speaks, palpitates, breathes, moves, she forms the stars to adorn her heaven, to narrate more the glory of he who created her. My will embraces everything as though in one breath, and lets nothing of all that is good and holy escape the soul. September 28, 1926 Louisa's Great Affliction Because of the Printing of the Writings Jesus Wants That They Be Entrusted to His Care Jesus pushes the father who must occupy himself with the printing. I was feeling oppressed and as though crushed under the weight of a profound humiliation because I had been told that not only what regards the will of God must be printed, but also what regards all the other things that my lovable Jesus has told me. My pain was such as to take away from me even the words, to be able to say something, so that they would not do it. Nor was I able to pray, my beloved Jesus, that he would not allow it. Everything was silence, inside and outside of me. Then my lovable Jesus, moving in my interior, clasped me to himself to infuse in me courage and strength. And he told me, My daughter, I do not want you to look at what you have written as your own, but to look at it as mine, and as something that does not belong to you. You must not enter into it at all. I shall take care of everything. Therefore, I want you to entrust it to my care. And as you write, I want you to give it to me as gift that I may be free to do whatever I want, and you may be left only with what you need in order to live in my will. I have given you as many precious gifts for as many knowledges as I have manifested to you. And you, you want to give me no gift? And I, my Jesus, forgive me, I myself would not want to feel what I feel, thinking that what has passed between me and you must be known to others, makes me restless and gives me such pain that I myself cannot explain. Therefore give me strength. In you I abandon myself and I give everything to you. And Jesus added, Good, my daughter, it is my glory, the triumph of my will, that requires all this. But it wants, it demands that its first triumph be over you. Aren't you happy to become the victory, the triumph of this supreme will? Do you not want, then, to make any sacrifice, so that this supreme kingdom may be known and possessed by creatures? I too know that you suffer very much in seeing that after long years of secrecy between me and you, in which I have kept you hidden with so much jealousy, our secrets are now coming out. You feel your strong impressions. But when it is I who want it, you too must want it. Therefore let us be in agreement and do not worry Then after this he made me see Reverend Father, and Jesus, being near him, placed his holy right hand on his head to infuse in him firmness, help, and will, saying to him, My son, hurry, do not lose time. 
I shall help you. I shall be near you, so that everything may go well and according to my will. Just as I care that my will be known, and just as I have dictated the writings about the kingdom of the supreme fiat with paternal goodness, so shall I help with the printing. I shall be in the midst of those who shall occupy themselves with it, so that everything may be regulated by me. Therefore hurry, hurry. October 2nd, 1926. How the generations are linked to one another, and therefore there are some that pray, some that receive, and some that possess. How Jesus gives according to our dispositions. His word is a new creation. How in heaven there are no secrets. I was feeling embittered to the summit because of the privation of my sweet Jesus. Oh, how bad I felt. I could not take any more. But when I reached as though the extremes of pain, he moved in my interior, and all afflicted told me, My daughter, I am looking at how much I have to expand the boundaries of the kingdom of my will to give possession of it to creatures. I know that they are unable to grasp the endlessness that the kingdom of my will contains, because it is not given to them, as creatures, to cross and embrace a will that corresponds to a kingdom that has no boundaries. In fact, since they are created beings, they are always restricted and limited. But even though they are limited, I dispose more or less goods, and the extension of the expanses that they must possess, according to their dispositions. And so I am looking at posterity, at the dispositions that they shall have. And I am looking at those in the present, to see the dispositions that they have, because those in the present must pray infiltrate, and prepare the kingdom of the supreme fiat for posterity. And according to the dispositions of posterity, and to the interest of those present, so do I keep expanding the boundaries of my kingdom, because the generations are so linked to one another that it always happens this way. One prays, another prepares, another infiltrates, another possesses. The same happened with my coming upon earth in order to form the redemption. It was not those who were present that prayed, sighed, and cried to obtain its goods. They are the ones who enjoy them and possess them. But those who lived before my coming and according to the dispositions of those in the present, and the prayers and dispositions of those in the past, so did I expand the boundaries of the goods of redemption. In fact, only when a good can be useful for creatures, then do I give it. But if it brings them no utility, why give it? And this utility is taken by them if they have more dispositions. But do you know when I expand its boundaries? When I manifest to you a new knowledge that regards the kingdom of my will. This is why, before manifesting it to you, I cast a glance over all to see their dispositions, whether it shall be useful for them, or it shall be for them as if it had not been spoken. and in seeing that I want to expand my boundaries more in order to give them more goods, more joys, more happiness to possess, but they are not disposed, 
I feel afflicted, and I wait for your prayers, for your rounds in my will, for your pains, in order to dispose those present, as well as posterity. And then I return to the new surprises of my manifestations about my will. This is why I am afflicted when I do not speak to you. My word is the greatest gift. It is a new creation. And being unable to issue it from myself, because creatures are not disposed to receive it, I feel within me the weight of the gift I want to give. And unable to give it, I remain afflicted and taciturn. And my affliction grows even more in seeing you afflicted because of me. If you knew how I feel your sadness, how it all pours into my heart, my will brings it deep into my inmost heart, because I do not have two wills, but one. And since it reigns in you, as a consequence, it brings your afflictions deep inside of me. Therefore, pray, and let your flight be continuous in the supreme fiat, that you may impetrate that creatures would dispose themselves, and I may return to speak once again. Having said this, he kept silent, and I remained more afflicted than before. I felt all the weight that Jesus felt because of the lack of dispositions of creatures. I felt as if Jesus would no longer speak to me for now. But Jesus, wanting to cheer me from my affliction, and also cheer himself, told me, My daughter, courage, do you think that everything that passed between me and you shall be known? No, my daughter, I shall make known that which is necessary, that which regards the kingdom of the supreme fiat. Or rather, I shall be even more generous compared to what creatures shall take of this kingdom of mine to give them free field in order to advance more and more, so as to let them expand their possession in the supreme fiat, that they may never say, Enough, we have no place else to reach. No, no, I shall use such abundance that man shall always have something to take and to extend his journey. But in spite of such abundance, not everyone shall know our secrets just as not everyone knows what passed between me and my mamma in order to form the kingdom of redemption, the surprising graces, the innumerable favors. And they shall know them in heaven, where there are no secrets, while on earth they have known only that which I gave in superabundance for their good. So I shall do with you, if I looked, it was for those who want to come to live in the kingdom of my will. But for you, for the little daughter of my will, for the one who has formed this kingdom together with me with so much sacrifice, shall my love ever be able to say enough, or deny my word to you, or not pour in you the continuous flow of my graces? No, I cannot, my little daughter. This is not in the nature of my heart, nor of my will, that contains a continued act, never interrupted, of giving, and giving always new surprises to the one who knows no other life but the life of my will. If you see me taciturn, it is not because of you, because between me and you there is no need of words in order to understand each other. To see each other is to understand each other. I pour all of myself in you, and you in me. And in pouring myself, 
I pour new graces in you, and you take them, because what is necessary for you, who must be the primary cause in order to form the kingdom of the eternal fiat, shall not be necessary for those who only have to live in it. With you, it is not only about living in it, but about forming it. Therefore your Jesus must abound very much with you to give you the raw materials for the formation of a kingdom so holy. This happens also in the low world. One who must form a kingdom has need of many means, of many raw materials, while one who must form only one city needs much less. And one who only moves to live in it with very few means can live in the city. The sacrifices that one who has to form a kingdom must make are not necessary for those who come to the decision of wanting to live in that kingdom. Therefore, I just want you to work in the formation of the kingdom of the supreme fiat. And your Jesus shall take care of all the rest. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 20, Part 2. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.